Hey everyone, we're out here at Chaffee Dam. We're on our way to Nundle. Nundle is an old gold mining town where gold mining started in the very early 1850s at the beginning of Australia's gold rush. We're going to go there and check out some of the history, the museums, the stores and the local scenery. The weather is beautiful today. The countryside on this drive is fantastic. You've got to do it if you've never been here. It's a beautiful part of the world. Let's go. Walking around Nundal is like stepping back in time. The stores are presented in an old time style and are great to poke around in. Scott picked up a couple of boys toys here and I bought a rolling pin of all things. The next place on our agenda was the Nundle Woolen Mill and Tour. So, uh, this is the last um, uh, processing mill of its type in Australia. So uh, go back to the 1960s, there would have been a couple hundred of these just around the country. This is the last in that working from greasy wool all the way through to a finish yarn. There are no other spinning mills like this in Australia. There are other spinning mills. The difference is that uh, the other spinning mills are doing their early stage processing offshore. We are doing everything here. There are some husband and wife teams, some small mini mills who are doing everything. But um, yeah, we, uh, we uh, source our greasy wool from wool growers in Tasmania. So oh, what a place. <laughs> uh, that we like. It's a, uh, it's a little bit longer than what mm. we get on the mainland. It's, if you're looking to source the best product out the other end, start with the best raw material. Mm. It's not very complicated. And uh, the, the wools we get from them are stunningly beautiful. All right. Uh, so there's, and the, and the, the wool with low vinyl was manufactured in 1916. So our opener is 107 this year. Has a couple of big drum rollers, about that sort of circumference, with needles like this on it. And these drum rollers rub against each other, which gently, doesn't look very gentle, mm very gently teases open the wool, because wool during the washing process tends to entangle together. This is just a very gentle teasing open the fibres so they can become further processed on the next machine. And the next machine is our carding line. Let's talk about carding. Uh, in my hands here, pieces of wood or paddles or historically known as cards, and they called them cards because they're always shaped like a playing card. These cards have needles on it, which perfectly replicate our carding line is a series of rollers from one length to the other, all needles like this on it. And I'll just give an example. So our carding line with all these rollers, by them rubbing against each other, they don't actually touch like I'm touching here, but by them rubbing against each other, what they start to do is align the fibres all in the same direction. So what was a jumbled mess is those fibres coming aligned. Now if I lick my fingers here a bit, grab some of those aligned fibres, start in a bit of a pull and a twist, and if I keep pulling, and keep twisting, that fibre will just keep getting longer and longer. And if I break that off and I put a bit more twist through here, I've now got a fibre here. All the strength in the world, I can't break that. And we're going to uh, play with some fibres a little bit later. You're going to twist some fibres in your hands as well. Just uh, to so there's a uh, very small pile of wool in the corner of the factory underneath that blue tarp. We picked that up by hand. We loaded in the hopper on our right, and the wool makes its way to our far left as far as you can see. 
just to remind you again, those rollers are a series of needles. By those rolling rollers rubbing against each other, they're constantly aligning the fibres all in the same direction. We're divided by four, 25. There's the first section, there's the second, there's the third. In the rubble here somewhere, there's some more sections. When this is completely full to the outside, I'd say this is maybe quarter full, maybe less. If When this is completely full to the outside, we wind about 1,000 continual metres of strand onto each section. 25 sections, we're winding 25,000 metres onto a roll, uh, or 25 kilometres, we're producing four rolls at a time, about every hour and 15 minutes, maybe hour and a half, we have a couple stops. That's a fair bit of yarn, that'll get you from here to Scone for example. You can barely drive to Scone legally in an hour and 15 minutes. So it is a fair bit of yarn. But to put that in context for you, while we produce 100 kilometres of yarn on our machine that was manufactured in 1914, a modern machine today produces about 3,000 kilometres of yarn at the same time. So while we can go from here to Scone, which sounds like a fair way, a modern machine will go from here to Perth in the same Whoa. time. Right. But the engineering concept, a series of rollers with needles aligning the fibres all in the same direction is still exactly the same today as it was 109 years ago when our machine was made or 250 years ago. Go back to the Industrial Revolution. The processing of textile in that time hasn't changed. Just grab it on one end. Something like this. And I simply want you to break the yarn. I just want you to feel how much strength is required to break the yarn. Mm. Not a lot. Mm -hmm. If you're a knitter, crochet, or weaver, this is going to drive you batty. It's going to drive you crazy because the damn stuff's going to keep breaking on you all the time. Those close to the basket, we drop the little piece in there, keep the longer bit. This time, maybe about an inch apart, two or three centimetres. This time, I'd like you to twist one way with one thumb and forefinger. And if you're really clever, twist the opposite way with the other. Give your fingers a bit of a lick if you need a bit of grip. Keep twisting until you can visually see the yarn go thin. Need to get a fair bit of twist in there. Once you reckon you've got a fair bit of twist in there, grip the yarn a little tighter. Now give it a bit of a pull. Wow. You should find the yarn was harder to break. Definitely. Uh, some work. of you may get to a stage where you cannot break the yarn. Or every other strand hits the other side of the machine, which uh, we can't see from this side. You're going to see the yarn disappear down these cylinders here. These cylinders are going to be spinning very quickly. They're going to grip the yarn and put a twist in it, just like we did in our hands just then. Once the yarn comes through these rollers here, the yarn is now fully twisted but then it needs to go somewhere. Keep an eye on the spindles down the bottom. You will see them going up and down a little bit. Um, the uh, the uh, twisted yarn has been wound onto the spindle. This machine manufactured 1956 in America. two kilometres of continuous strand onto this spindle. All right, an eight ply yarn. Do we have some knitters or crochets? Yes. Two strands coming from the back, picking up the third strand before it comes through the rollers here. This machine is called a dandy rover. So it's roving or twisting those three strands into one to make our equivalent of eight ply yarn. This machine manufactured 1938 in England. And this is going to spin very quickly. You're going to see it wind off the bobbin into a hank or a skein. We normally do a dozen at a time. I've just got a couple threaded up for you. Um, yeah. How we make our equivalent of 72 ply yarn is we take our eight ply bobbins off the front of the big dandy here. Uh, over on the back wall here, the small dandy, instead of the spindle standing up behind it, you can see the bobbins lying down, and we go three strands into one, which makes our equivalent of 24 ply yarn, which are in the centre shelves up here. When we want to make our equivalent of 72 ply yarn, we take the 24 ply bobbins off the front of the machine, put them over the back again, we do change around the twist, three strands into one, makes our equivalent of 72 ply yarn. This down is onto a cone. Uh, this machine's new to us, arrived here just over 12 months ago. Um, 
It replaced our 1941 ball winder. Our 1941 ball winder we simply wore out. It's spin, and the wool is going to wind around the expanded head. Is the head's expanding. The tour was $5 and after the tour you can browse the store or use your tour ticket as a discount voucher on some great items in the store. So we just had a bit of a tour through the Nundal Woolen Mill, which was fantastic. Uh, Nick had walked us through all the different stages of when they start with the wool all the way through to yarn and we actually bought some socks so we'll um we'll try those on later on fantastic tour really informative great sense of humor um we're next we're off to the gold museum we just had lunch there before chicken and avocado caramelized onion on turkish bread beautiful with melted cheese and uh yeah so let's go The Gold Mine Museum is well presented. The self-guided tour takes you through a replica gold mine where you explore the ins and outs of gold mining and all of the associated artefacts. I wish that Minutes with Mates had over a thousand followers. <laughs> so we're inside the Nundal Gold Museum. It's fantastic, really good setup. And again, you've got these different itemized boxes so you can have a look at something on the wall and go, well, what is that? And you can have a look on the chart and tell you exactly what it is. And that's a wrap on our day in Nundal. What a great little place. We met some great new mates here and look forward to wherever we go next, where we will spend those minutes with new mates. Mm -hmm.